so good morning um, and if you're watching somewhere where it isn't morning or if you're watching later on today or somewhere else in the world then good afternoon good evening and good night bonus points if you can name the film I've just uh, badly misquoted uh, my name is Sally O'Hare I'm BRF's uh, new ish messy church coordinator I've been in post for about five weeks I think um, whatever time of day it is for you it's really good to be here with you uh, do say hello in the comments and how you're feeling today. Um, it would be really great to hear from you and to know that I'm not just talking into the void. Um, and I'm not talking into the void. Hello, Mary. Good to see you on the chat this morning. Jane, I'm hoping that you can see me as well. And yes, uh, you can. This is good to know. <laughs> Um, so, as is uh, traditional for Messy Church Facebook Lives, um, I have a candle here. Um, I am something of a uh, pyromaniac on the quiet, so I do love a bonfire on the beach um, or sitting around the fire pit with some good friends. Um, so a friend bought me this candle, um, not least as part of a Christmas present to uh, sort of bring fire inside a little bit. but. A candle today is a symbol. So I'm going to get some matches and hope that I manage to get this bit right. Hopefully you can see that. And hopefully I won't set anything on fire other than the candle. So the cam candle is a symbol that however far apart we are, wherever we are in the world, we are all together. Physic, um, and also as a reminder that whoever we are and however we're feeling today, God is with us. Um, so I'm going to put that down somewhere so that I don't um, knock it over, because I do have a habit of knocking things over. Um, and so we take a moment to pray before we start. Loving God. Light in our darkness. We bring this moment to you. We thank you for the wonderful gift of Messy Church. We thank you for the amazing people you've brought together across this network. And we thank you for the chance to take a moment to be together with each other and with you in the midst of this day. Amen. Oh, lots of comments. Hello, Jane. Hello, Sandra. Hello, Karis. Hello, Jocelyn. Uh, Excellent. Thank you so much uh, for joining us this morning. I'm not talking into a void. Um, so, uh, a little bit about me. Um, I grew up in Warsaw, which is a town just northwest of Birmingham in the UK. Um, I ran away to the seaside to go to university. I spent three very happy years in Aberystwyth uh, and then moved back home. Um, I've been part of the team at my local Methodist Messy Church since it began in 2013. And it's been a really joyous part of my faith journey. Before I joined BRF, I worked for uh, Network Rail um, as a project manager, upgrading various parts of the railway network. Um, so starting this role has been a bit of a change for me. Uh, but I have to say I am loving the chance to, as a friend uh, kindly put it, do messy church full time. Um, always a bit odd in terms of what to say in terms of bio bits, but a few other random facts about me. Um, I love watching sport, particularly football, rugby and cricket. A very tragic confession. I'm an Aston Villa fan, so I spend fairly large parts of the football season really quite disappointed. Although, actually, it's not been so bad this year. So, you know, keep your fingers crossed. Or don't, if you're a Blues fan. Um, I do also love playing sport. Um, at the moment, as the weather's starting to improve, I've got back to playing tennis very badly. Um, fortunately, my tennis partner is on about the same level as I am, so we get a really good workout chasing tennis balls that we failed to hit across the tennis court. Um, but aside from that, and aside from Messy Church, in my spare time, I'm a guide and a rainbow leader. Um, I know there are some fellow leaders in the Messy Church network. Um, if you are a guide, rainbow, brownie, ranger, girl scout leader, um, do give us a shout in the comments. Um, even if you are not a current member of Girl Guiding, I suspect you may well know the Girl Guiding motto, be prepared. There's a big bit of me 
that really likes to be prepared. In my previous job, we'd spend a lot of time preparing for and planning key bits of construction work to try and make sure that it all happened at the right time, in the right order and in a safe manner. And you will all know that being prepared is a big part of a messy church going well too. We need to know what activities are happening, who will be buying or borrowing what's needed, what time the food needs to go in the oven, how we play music during the celebration, etc, etc, etc. And I bet your list is as long as mine, most messy churches. And sometimes I manage to do all of this being prepared really well, or at least better than other times. But often, really often, it's the great team of fellow volunteers that I work with that saves my bacon, that remember that the jacket potatoes need to go in the oven before the session starts, if we're going to have them for tea at the end of the session, that remember that we really, 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 really need to put the paint away after it's been used, because otherwise we get to spend an extra hour cleaning the carpet when we should be on our way home. Even when I do manage to be really well prepared, when I turn up in terms of time, when I've got a list of everything that needs to be done and a little outline of what goes on each table, I still find myself being caught by surprise. Um, and I suspect you've probably got some really brilliant surprising moments at Messy Church. So do share those in the chat. Oh, Sandra, aged Queen's Guide. Great. And Ica was a Queen's... Well, Ica was a girl guide? Brilliant. Uh, yeah, sorry, Jane. Moment to confess that I am a Villa fan. Um, so, one... Uh, turn the oven on too. Yes, we did that once. We did put the jackets in and forgot. Sandra, clearly I need you on my team. One memorable moment that sticks out for me is when I've been as prepared as I ever get for Messy Church. Partly because um, one of the other members of the planning team wasn't there uh, and that made it a bit more stressful. So I, you know, done the prep and it was going really well. It was, it was good. Uh, and then a birthday party knocked on the front door of the hall that we were using. It'd been a double booking and they needed the hall that we were in. Uh, and I say now after a few moments of panic, I'm convinced it was several minutes, but we figured we could manage in the foyer and the two smaller rooms. So we picked up the activity tables, lock, stock and barrel. Uh, and we shifted everything with the odd small child still attached to the tables. That messy church stands out for me not because it went wrong or at least it didn't go as planned. Um, because actually, in life, and particularly at Messy Church, things not going as planned happen quite a lot. It stands out for me because when it did go wrong, no one pointed fingers, nobody blamed anybody else. Instead, everybody just helped to put things back on track. I have vivid memories of various people standing to eat at the end of that Messy Church, because there weren't enough chairs in the smaller room for everyone. It's still a memory that makes me smile because of the sense of support that came from all those who were there, particularly some of our more regular attenders. Um, just having a quick look through the comments. Oh, we seem to have got into a discussion thread on glue spreaders and the best ways to remove glue. Uh, Ica was a baden powell Trefoil era guide. Excellent. Um, quite liking this discussion thread. Glue and uh, Baden-Powell, an interesting combination. Um, but that story also highlights for me the other side of the being prepared coin. It's really great for us to be prepared. It's really, really important. But it's equally important not to lose sight of God's role. We need to make space and to be prepared for the Holy Spirit to be at work during Messy Church to look out for and celebrate those moments when God's love shines through. That fabulous moment when even though you've pre carefully prepared how you're going to tell the Easter story, you know, you've got all your props, everything's beautifully cut out. A child who's heard it that week at school bobbles over with the excitement and they tell it more beautifully than you ever could. That moment when you're feeling flat and deflated and like there's nothing else that you can give and one of the adults wanders over and they give you a hug and the love that that hug represents carries you through the rest of the session 
the moment when one of your regular attenders wanders over to somebody new who's looking a bit lost and they make them a drink and they have a chat. I love these moments because it, it reminds me that each messy church is a community worshipping together. It's a great example of living out Paul's words in Corinthians. This is the message version, but um, use whichever copy you feel comfortable with. When you gather for worship, each of you be prepared with something that will be useful for all. Sing a hymn, teach a lesson, tell a story, lead a prayer, provide an insight. Take your turn, no one person taking over. Then each speaker gets a chance to say something special from God and you all learn from each other. If you choose to speak, you're also responsible for how and when you speak. When we worship the right way, God doesn't stir us up into confusion. He brings us into harmony. This goes for all churches, no exceptions. I'd love it if you'd shared your thoughts on this passage in the chat. Oh, Sandra, thank you. Amen to space for God, absolutely key. Uh, and Iker says, yes, we need to make space for the Holy Spirit. Uh, Vicky is taking her fun with glue spreaders where she can. Thanks, Vicky. Um, if I'm thinking about that passage, I particularly like the last bit in the message translation because it highlights for me one of the awesome joys of Messy Church, that in spite of the surface level chaos, mess and occasional confusion, occasional, it's a place where the, through that chaos, God brings us into harmony, into a place where her love is shared with everyone who comes. I also love the other aspect of this verse, the thought that each person has a gift within them that they can bring to the community's worship. It's important, I think, to remember that we don't all bring the same gifts and talents. We do all bring something. This is the biggest joy of working in a team to deliver Messy Church, because it means the fact that I can't sing in tune, and this is a big confession as a Methodist, but it's no news to the people that I worship with get a little space round, round my row, very good at clearing space. Um, but the fact that I can't sing in, a tune, in tune isn't a problem. I'm part of a team where other people have a gift for music or for remembering to put the jacket potatoes in the oven and, as Sandra says, to turn it on. I think this thought about getting everything right speaks to another common worry for messy church teams. What if I get it wrong? And I know when I've led the celebration at my own messy church that this is something I worry about. Equally commonly, what if it all goes wrong? What if everything goes to pot at today's messy church? And I think for me, the thing I remember for both of those questions is that this is not our work. It's God's work that we have the joy of helping with. It's OK to take a risk to try something new. If it fails, that's OK. Something different may grow from that failure. God may use it in unexpected ways or may not. But either way, holy risk taking is a good thing. Thinking about using our God given gifts brings me to the last of my thoughts for today. It's just about two years since the very first Facebook Live right at the start of the pandemic. And for some of us, it's starting to feel like we're emerging from the last two years. While some people are still feeling a sense of fear and uncertainty. Even though Covid is dropping out of the news, it's not particularly gone away. And there are other things in the news at the moment which feel equally worrying. We think particularly of the situation in Ukraine. For some of us, Messy Church is just restarting. For some it's never stopped, but it has changed. And some may not have restarted and may be working through what to do next. For lots of us, there is, I think, a feeling of spring, a feeling of preparing for a new beginning, which does work rather well. Because we find ourselves in Lent, a time that Jesus set aside to prepare for his new beginning. So as we find ourselves at the start of a new season, it's time to ask, what do I need to do to be prepared? What do I or my team need to resource this new season? 
do we need to set aside some time to reflect together as a team on what we've learned and what we'd like to change going forward? Maybe you'd find it helpful to join one of our masterclasses. Um, I know Jane's put the link for that in the chat, so do have a look at those. It's a chance to learn from others right across the Messy Church network. Maybe now is the time to sign up for our Messy Church conference in May and take the chance to be re-energised and revitalised as we celebrate together. Link again is in the current comments. I've seen a couple of people. I saw Caris say she was definitely coming to conference. We really do look forward to welcoming you to that wonderful opportunity. Maybe you and your team need to consciously take time this Lent to be still and to listen for God's voice. We'll be posting once a week as we go through Lent with ideas on ways to take a moment to be still and to reflect. Whatever you do, we'd really, really love to hear about it. And we'd particularly love to see you in May because it really will be a great weekend. I'd like to say thank you for joining um, me and joining everybody else for this Facebook Live or for watching it back later. Um, it's great to have you here either way. If all goes to plan, we'll be back live on the 13th of April um, and I really look forward to seeing you then. Um, I finished 10 minutes early, so you get 10 minutes of your day back. Thanks very much, everyone.